It's it's the best clock that we know of. No kidding. Yes. It, can you identify different ones by their clock rate? You know, this is oh, this was going so fast. It must be Joe over here. This is Margaret. You know. Oh sure. That's so you know how to keep sure. this separate in the, in the, yeah. in the universe. Yeah. Well, we name them, of course. Not Joe uh, and Margaret, I'm sure. <laughs> no, they what do, actually what do you get a what? telephone number assigned to them. They get a telephone number? That's the joke. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's typically a lot of numbers that right. specify its position, mm -hmm. along with some letters in the beginning. So, so you can't have one named after you if you discover a neutron star? I'm afraid not. What what decides whether a star, <clears throat> when it end of its life, collapses to become a, a neutron star or it collapses to become a black hole? What uh, does determine that is uh, essentially the mass of the star at the time that it collapses. If there is a threshold above which even the neutrons would not be able to, the pressure that the neutrons have would not be able to with withstand the pull of gravity, in which case it would just collapse down to a single point, which is what we call a black hole. Mm -hmm. But in reality, we don't know what this mass exactly is because we don't understand the fundamental interactions well enough to, to know exactly what this dividing line is. And it's, it's uh, actually ongoing research um, carried out by many groups that, um, to, to determine what this dividing line is. And now, it, it took some time before scientists accepted the, the concept of a black hole, didn't it? What, is, what was holding up that, that acceptance? It's they are just strange. They are yeah. just not the matter that we are used to thinking of. Um, Einstein had a problem with black holes. However, uh, in retrospect, one does not see an alternative to a black hole. What happens when gravity is the strongest force, so much stronger than the strong weak and electromagnetic forces and the pressure that, that comes from elementary particles, then it's inevitable to form a black hole. But they are just strange. Hmm. So what happens in a black hole? Basically the same thing that happens in a, at the beginning of a neutron star? It, it runs out of its fire, but it's much more massive? That's what we think, exactly. Um, it may or may not have the supernova explosion stage. If it mm -hmm. is extremely massive, it might just implode all the way um, and nothing comes out. But we also believe that there's an intermediate stage where the supernova explosion forms, but still there is enough mass at the center to turn the object into a black hole. If it's black and it's dark and you can't see it, how, how do you know you it, it? How do you know it's there? Well, because it has this intense gravitational field around it, even though we don't see anything from the black hole, it has a uh, radius of effect that is thousands of, of miles. So the matter that is around the black hole definitely feels the presence of the black hole and emits light because uh, that environment is so, so uh, energetic and so it can be very hot. How would you compare black holes to neutron stars? Or do you have any favorites? Is there any reason why you want to st study one and not the other? Well, um, I don't have a favorite. I like them both. But the reality is neutron stars are more complex than black holes. Black holes can have only two uh, quantities that define them. General relativity predicts that there are only two quantities that define a black hole. Mm -hmm. It's mass and it's spin. A neutron star is not restricted by any of these. We see all four forces in effect in the neutron star. So from a physicist's point of view, they are, they are just wonderful environments to, to study things that we cannot study in terrestrial labs. Black holes, on the other hand, are so enigmatic that it, one is drawn to them. So I, I like them both.